Hi and welcome back to the vlog. We've had some pretty miserable weather here. Yeah, it's been overcast and very chilly and sleet and rain. Um, but today we've got the sun back out. Um, and although we had some snow a little earlier on, and if you can see it in the background there, um, it all seems to be going away. The weather app is just so unbelievably unreliable uh, at the moment. Anyway, thanks for coming back um, to the vlog. This is Living in Bosnia and Herzegovina, uh, a YouTube um, channel with stories about Bosnia and Herzegovina. We've um, had some guests staying with us. Um, we don't normally do that, um, but we ran out of briquettes out of winter fuel, so we've just taken on a new delivery. And these are our briquettes. And Phoebe, our little dog, has been digging holes and um, finding voles. You know those small animals that go and make big mole hills um, in the garden as well. But one of the main things that I've been doing this week is catching up with uh, a lady from Holland called Avi Dergsen. Um, a few years ago I bumped into Avi on uh, the internet because she had been here in Banja Luka um, dancing with a folklore ensemble. Uh, I didn't really appreciate at that time how much she was in love with the country uh, and the traditions and the culture. So it's taken some time, but there's a podcast um, all about uh, Bosnian folklore. Uh, the link to that is in the description below. So if you'd like to listen to a podcast, you can. Uh, we had very bad data and we still do at the moment. It's uh, yeah, we're in the middle of nowhere, really. Um, so we don't have broadband or anything like that. A very limited internet connection, but uh, I managed to use the mobile phone, stick it by the window, precariously balanced uh, on a mug and got a reasonable connection. Um, and when we're doing the, the podcast, uh, I got some video as well. So this week's vlog is 25 minutes of that. There's some clips of dancing. So if you're interested in the culture of Bosnia and Herzegovina, this is it. We are Tamara and David, an Anglo-Balkan couple who live in a village in beautiful northern Bosnia and Herzegovina. Here on our channel, we take you along with us during our daily lives and also to the places we discover on our trips away. From everyday life to culture and food, we'll show you what it's like for us living in this much misunderstood country. We're looking forward to you joining us. Remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss a video. What what made you want to come to to the Balkans and in particular Bosnia and Herzegovina? Today, for example, um, we're, we're talking about the wonders of the country. And yet I was just before talking to you, dropping in on a seminar uh, to try and encourage tourism and to try and encourage visitors to come here and it's been an uphill struggle always is and always has been an uphill struggle what made yeah. you want what made you want to come to this country this very misunderstood country uh in southeast europe well in the first place i i uh, had the culture in my heart you know the the songs and i i i um I never was interested, well, I was interested, but I never cared about the, the war stories because I think that's a big problem. People still think, uh, like, is it safe you're going to Bosnia or Serbia or um, because of, of the war? Um, but I think for me, it's the people that I come for. They are so open and loving and uh, particular Bosnian people, because I think in history, they, all, they were always the ones in the middle, you know, they were always the ones um, that people came to attack or how do you say it? And I think they are more um, vulnerable, I guess. They are more open. They are more... Um, I don't know, warm. They are just 
you feel at home when you come there it's just a second home and that they embrace you and and even after all those crazy things that happened in that country with all those ethnic groups they are just still open and it's um and beside that when people come maybe the first thing they need to know it's a beautiful country it's beautiful nature it's it's beautiful it, the food is really i see you are very lucky <laughs> you, you can eat a lot of that um it's just um, but when they are really in Bosnia, they can feel the love for each other and for their nature and for their country and their traditions. I don't know. It's is that a good answer? <laughs> yeah, I, th I think that's yeah. You, I, I couldn't have said it better myself. So, when did you first come to the country? How long did you stay? And where did you stay? Because I don't think that you were staying in a hotel, right? Um, well, the first time I did, <laughs> I um, uh, I went like my mother on dance courses, um, and uh, that were organized from the Netherlands um, to to learn dances from. Uh, no, well, my first uh, dance week was in Serbia. and it was in uh, not so long ago. It was two thousand and thirteen. It was my first time I, I went to Serbia. And then on, on years later, every year I, I went to a dance course because I fell in love. I just wanted to go back. And um, it was only 2016 or, or well, something like, like there. I, I went to Bosnia for a dance course and because my teacher in, in the in the netherlands he he went to bosnia like 30 years ago to dance with the folk dance group in banja luka because they visited the netherlands on the folk festival in the netherlands and and yeah he just uh stepped in with them in the bus and drive to bosnia and they danced on the summers and uh, so he knew the group and we went with him to the group to to learn uh, bosnian dances but what I just said, the Bosnian people are even more warming, even more, uh, I don't know, it, it even felt more home, like my first time in Serbia, this was just more my home. And I asked at the folk ensemble, um, can I join for a couple months? It's my dream to dance on stage with, um, with the people where the dances come from, you know, not only with Dutch people when we and we and we try to to make the costumes and, and look like uh, we're from Bosnian or whatever, but just with the people being on stage and dancing with them. So they say, OK, um, they didn't think I was seriously because um, uh, in 2017, I planned to, to, to be there for three months and to dance with them and they still thought like that's a weird question why would the dutch girl wants to dance with us three months in, in an ensemble um but i did i just came and um i had uh, like a a, a a little flat something i i rent and uh i was dancing three three uh times a week and uh, after uh, those three months of beautiful adventures um, I stood on stage with them on the um, how you say uh, last uh, concert of the year in December it's like a big concert so uh, that was my main experience after that I I couldn't stop going there like uh, the the Maslisha family that's the ensemble in Banyaluka it's just my second family I I, I I miss them and I miss Banja Luka and, and the environment and the people I met in the villages. It's just, yeah, it, came, it became more and more and more. <laughs>
those for those that don't know, the Masalesha dance uh, group is named after the um, partisan war hero, I believe, Veselin uh, Masalesha. Yep. I, I've seen a lot of um, folklore in the time that I've been here. Uh, and I, I, to, to be honest with you, I am fascinated about it. And I'm going to have one particular uh, technical question to ask you. Well, maybe not a technical question, but we'll do that uh, a little later on. Um, going up to a dance group and saying, can I, as a foreigner, and saying, can I join and can I take part? Um, I know things are changing in the country rapidly at the moment, and they've certainly changed in Banyaluka since I arrived. Um, you can get around now uh, using English. When I first came here, it, you know, the, <laughs> yeah. the, the waiters deliberately gave me um, a Cyrillic menu. I mean, come on. Uh, I like their sense of humour. How was the language problem for you? Uh, I mean, English is your second language. Now you're, you want to try and do something that requires uh, technical ability, coordination, and all the other things. And, and you're trying to do this in another language. How difficult was it to communicate with, with the dance group? Well, uh, um, I love the language, so I was very uh, open to learn it. But it's a very hard language. I, I think you, you uh, experienced that too. It's just oh, all those it's just a hard language and um, uh, well for the dance classes it was okay because I could count to ten and uh, I learned with um, with time what kind of steps or dances uh, meant in their language uh, but a lot of people cannot speak English or are you know, too shy to speak English so in the dance group, it was sometimes hard because they just uh, were were talking uh, Bosnian with each other. But I, when I look back, I'm happy that it was like that because I could learn it faster than um, and I, I, you know, I had to, I had to, and it. Um, uh, sometimes it was funny because it was like a dance class. You had two groups. One group uh, has to dance the choreography, and the other group has to wait. And then uh, this this choreographer, he was just uh, pointing out people like you have to stay and you have to leave. <laughs> and a lot of times I was just standing there like, oh, I have to stay, and it was no, Afi, you have to leave now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> or it was the other way around. I I was already gone, and then the choreography came. AP, I need you. <laughs> yeah. So sometimes it was it was funny, but I think it's good to 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 be able to learn when when people and as you say, like in a restaurant, it's still sometimes very difficult. You know, when when you arrived in when you arrived in Banja Luka had or, or even Serbia when you started had you ever done any Balkan dances before you arrived or was it uh, that, that much of a culture shock that it was wow here I go no no I, uh, I grew up with it because in the Netherlands it maybe sounds a little weird but we in the Netherlands we really have like this folk dance culture where people dance dances from other countries so, uh, and a lot of the, uh, the dances are from the Balkan. Um, I don't know why that happens, but it was like very popular. Um, and maybe it's because it's very typical for our Dutch people that we don't like our uh, traditional dances. So we want to dance other dances from other countries. Um, yeah, and my dad was a teacher uh, or was a musician uh, who played in, in folk dance classes on the dance ac academy in the Netherlands. Now they don't have international dancing anymore, but in that time you had on the dance academy, you had also the international dances, like the folk dances. And uh, the woman who was teaching that was Yvonne Despotovic, and she was married, of course, with Siga Despotovic. And uh, I don't know, I grew up with that. She was just uh, someone I, I, I 
we met a lot in our house and uh, I don't know, it was just part of our, uh, I, I can show you one picture, wait. <laughs> I was like four, I think. Wow. And I was dancing in our room, like some Serbian dance or whatever, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, so I danced it before. <laughs> Um, we're, I, I'm going to talk about clothing and everything uh, a little later on because uh, we'll we'll be talking quite a bit about your your film, which I think is going to be an uh, an amazing thing. Um, you you were based in Banja Luka. You must have uh, travelled quite a bit while you were here. And the reason I'm asking this now is because Tamara, my wife, uh, used to dance with another Banja Luka group. Uh, and she talks fondly um, a, a, about about those times. And in fact, um, it took me a long time to get over the embarrassment of walking through a street and people would be dancing color. And the next minute I'd look around and where had she gone? And, and there she is doing it. Um, <laughs> so did, did you travel a lot? Did you see? I mean, because bosnia Herzegovina has got all these different little areas in it and they have different costumes for every village it seems to me maybe that's a little bit too strong uh, and they all have variations on a theme did did you experience that while you were here yeah yeah yeah, a lot well i know it from like the the, the um did she dance in chaivats or you don't know yeah yeah chaivats yeah uh, well, you know, um, um, I know it from the the stage. How do you say it? Um, like the art uh, way to dance, because um, on stage they are very. Um, um, ah, the names, the words. Uh, um, like you have glamour, so this is the costume of glamour. You know. Uh, in the art styled way to dance folk dances you you see that the difference is very clear um but i also meet people in 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 the mountain villages they um they had some some uh, costumes from their great great grandmother who made them and um uh, I had the opportunity to, to visit them and to see the closing. It was really special because it was like the original state. And um, yeah, you have a lot of different um, patterns and a lot of different embroidery um, uh, colors. Um, some have a yellow, some don't, some have coins. Uh, Every village has its own identity. I'm not an expert in this, but I'm always quite amazed. There's a dance group in the late, nearest town to us of Laktashi where the, the guys have like white fur hats. Um, <laughs> I and, think they dance flashke. <laughs> anyway, they have these big white hats, um, yes. furry, furry hats, which I think uh, look amazing, uh, but it has that identity. Uh, and yet there's others that just have a very flat cap like um, in Herzegovina. And I'm going to talk about flat caps. I'm going to talk about dancing without music because you did mention Glamoch. That must be quite amazing. Are, th are they the only people that dance without music? No, 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 no. No, there are a lot of uh, regions that have that because um, you have to imagine like um, this whole state, not only Bosnia, but this whole uh, Yugoslavia was uh, a part of the Ottomans em empire. Uh, yeah, empire. You say? The empire, huh? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was the right word. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, it's, it was too long that I spoke in English. <laughs> um, uh, it was for 200 years that those Ottomans were, were uh, um, well, were, were uh, whatever. But they, <laughs> they bring a lot of uh, things w with them. Um, not only in clothes, like the scarves, sometimes you can say it's, it's uh, um, from the Ottomans or, or some music instruments, but also it was, I think, 
it was forbidden to play music or to to uh, play instruments uh, so, something like that and that's why people started to to make their own noise and their own singing um so glamuch is not the only one uh, if you talk about Bosnia, you also have the uh, Zmijanje region. Um, maybe you know it from the costumes with the blue. Yeah, base. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I find it amazing. Zmijanje from the Manjaca yeah. ranges and everything like that. Yeah. And there they also have this um, uh, dances without music. I never knew that. Thank you for that because I'm going to go down and see that. Um, but... <laughs> When you see that, when you see them dancing without music, is that, would you say that's the purest form of dance if you can express yourself just with your feet and with your voice and dance at the same time? It's a beautiful question. You feel it like that, David, that it's the purest? Yeah, I mean, it's, it, 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 it's, it's, it, it's like it's from this, this I mean, the, to me, as somebody that has no knowledge of this, um, People dance to the music. I find the music quite invocative, um, but they're dancing their steps. But a, a lot of the time, I, when I first came here, I thought, I wonder what it would be like if there was never any music. And then I just shook my head and said, but that's never going to happen. And then one day I bumped into the Glamochka Kolo and, <laughs> and, I, and I just thought, this is so entertaining. And there's not, it's just voice and feet, isn't it, basically? Yeah, it is, and they have the bells, right? That that uh, it's a funny fact that it's uh, it's when you step, the bells are like one second late or, or something like that. So it's very hard to, to to feel the same rhythm, but that's something else. Well, I don't know if it's the 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 the, the basic because you also have like instruments that exist for years. Um, you have like the flutes, um, like hundred years ago, they had uh, um, shepherd, shepherds who, who needed the flutes uh, to communicate or to, to um, um, or just to, to, to waste time. But it was like the caval, it's a long flute. I think it, it exists for a long time and, and also the guzle. It was a uh, um, an instrument that that used uh, by poets, so they could tell stories. Um, so there are a lot of things that ver are very pure, I think. And uh, mostly, what you see on stage with those folk ensembles is like art, because it has to be interesting for people like uh, people who don't deal with it. So it's based on the authentic patterns, but it's made more interesting. You, your experience here, um, it, it, it's like, it's, it's, I, I feel like being in Bosnia-Herzegovina, I want to tell the story about the country. You've gone, yeah. one, you've gone a massive step further by saying, <laughs> well, I'm going to tell my story, I'm going to make a film. If it, <laughs> I mean... It, Making a film is a ma is a major undertaking. Um, why did you decide to go that huge step and yeah, uh, 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 make a film? This film, I mean, making a podcast takes me what f I don't know two days at the, at the most. To make a weekly vlog about life in Bosnia Herzegovina, I don't know, would take me about I don't know six hours of editing. Your film is ha ha has has been a major undertaking, a lot longer than a few <laughs> minutes and a few hours. Why did you decide to, yeah. to jump into this? Well, uh, before I answer... So that's part of uh, the podcast. You can listen to the whole podcast. As I say, there's a link um, in the description below. And after, well, where we faded out there, the data line just broke up and her video the video from holland just froze so yeah please do listen to the podcast it's i think it's really really cool and she certainly does love the country uh, doesn't she if you like the vlog please give us a thumbs up thumbs ups mean a lot to us what have we got coming soon in the weeks ahead well i've got to go back into hospital to have the plate and screws taken out of my ankle which i broke back in July 
hopefully after that, with a bit of physiotherapy, I'm going to be very mobile and we'll be uh, working again with Control Rent a Car uh, to show you some of the wonderful things uh, in the area. And if you do check the blog out, you'll see that there's um, a post about uh, former German settlements in the area, former German colonies. Oh, somebody's getting their car lifted. Obviously, they've broken down somewhere. Yeah, but there's a podcast and a vlog as well, I think, a video on the channel um, about these German colonies. And I'm doing a lot of research into that. So hopefully there'll be a good story there about the Germans that lived here in this area of northern Bosnia-Herzegovina from the late 19th century till about 1944. But more of that to come. So, yeah. Oh, chilly. Going to go back in now and put this together. From Tam and me, do stay safe wherever you are and we will catch you on the next one.